resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Well, hello, my Next Level friend. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Artist Next Level podcast. This is a special edition episode in which I am interviewing artists from around the world as they are stuck at home during the coronavirus lockdown. Today, I don't have artists in lockdown with me. I actually have two amazing collectors, the Bennett's, the art here with me today. We're going to talk about what are our collectors doing during the pandemic. Well, hi, Elaine. Hi, Stephen. Welcome to the show today. How are you? Great. Thank you, Sergio. Thanks for having us. It's always a pleasure to see you in person. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, sometimes we run into each other at an art fair or on a show here in Chicago. And right now, because we are all confined to our homes, uh, you are so gracious to join me today for this conversation here as we've been talking to artists from all around the world, see how we all have been affected and how we are also adjusting uh, to the present and to the new future that's coming out of this as well, which we were uh, chatting a bit ago and uh, we will now uh, share this with our friends here. So first of all, uh, uh, Dr. Elaine, if you can tell us a little bit about, you know, um, how things going where you are at in the world in terms of the, you know, staying home and in terms of staying in place. Yes. Um, I think it's going well. Um, we're trying to focus on our spiritual, physical, emotional health mm -hmm. um, and maintain as much as our routine as you can possibly do while you're at home. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're just like everybody, we're adjusting. You have those moments where that are better than others. Fortunately, we like each other, so <laughs> that kind of helps that so we don't spend all day every day in the same room. <laughs> um, yeah, and as we were telling you before, we've very intentionally connected with and stayed connected with family and friends. We've learned how to use Zoom, mm -hmm. and um, so we're scheduling, like we call them virtual cocktail parties or virtual... Wonderful coffee clutches and so um you have 40 minutes and you catch up with friends and it's actually been good for our souls and yeah. it's intellectually stimulating too because most people we know read so you, you know you share yeah. ideas well we did the uh we had a uh, oh, zoom conference call with elaine's family so we had 11 video feeds from three different continents <laughs> oh, uh, wow. where all these people are scattered. And it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. It, it was great. It was Easter. And we went to physically been together. And so this was very, very special because it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for all of us staying in place. Exactly. So, and so it was very special. Yeah, it was good. It was great. That, now I have an interesting question that I just thought about. Because you are collectors and you have an extensive collection. As you are more time now at home, do you walk around the house and like, hmm, maybe we should change that one? You know, the artwork that's on the wall <laughs> for the I, I, I like, bury it a little bit. <laughs> this is where you see the difference between Steve and I. <laughs> okay. I walk around and I say, Oh, I love that painting there. Oh, I love that painting. Oh, uh -huh. look at this. And I noticed things I hadn't noticed before. Yeah. He'll walk around and say, let's change this out. <laughs> <laughs> true, actually. It is yeah. true. So Elaine likes to have everything kind of frozen. Mm -hmm. And I, I had her freaked out because I walked through the house and I said, let's change every, let's move <laughs> every painting out and let's, <laughs> let's change every painting in the house and we'll replace every, and the house has about 50 paintings in it. <laughs> and I said, let's just change them all. Right. She says, no, 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 no. <laughs> so we, we've agreed that we have to have uh, 
spaces that we curate. So she mm -hmm. curates her office and I oh, curate my office and that sort of thing. So Very we curate cool. spaces in our house. We have common spaces that okay. we both have to agree on and then we have our individuals. I love that. I love that. That's really cool. So as we are kind of in confinement, one of the things that I love about both of you as a couple uh, is that you do a lot of things together as collectors. You love artists and you love working with artists, following artists. And when this pandemic came about, uh, you did something that was really exciting, mm -hmm. really remarkable, which you called it Funds for Friends. Can you tell us a little bit about either uh, Dr. Elaine or Stephen, uh, whichever want to jump on this, uh, tell us a little bit about how that idea came out and, and how did it work out? Well, as I mentioned, I think part of what we do is we're paying attention to our spiritual life and mm -hmm. we, we are filled with gratitude for all the good things that we do have. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to, we were talking one morning about even though how, like our whole life has shifted, mm -hmm. how there's been so much change and, and you're worried for your friends and your family and fear that mm -hmm. we're just filled with gratitude. And so we started to think about what we could do because we're in a situation where we don't need to worry about our rent check mm -hmm. or where our food's going to come from. And um, so out of it came Fun for Friends. We talked to some people who said that, well, we had to look at a couple of things, but one was that $500 would be enough maybe to buy food for a family of four, right. for a month. And that was kind of how we decided on that. And so um, we talked to the people that help us with public relations in their wonderful women who are brilliant. And they came up with the, social media through Instagram, mm -hmm. that if people liked both of us and shared, then they would go into this drawing. And fortunately, because you always worry about something like this, there are apps that take mm -hmm. all those names and they just randomly do it. So we didn't even know. We didn't have, it was, it was no fuss, no muss, the, the app pick, but based I, on the criteria, zoom, there they were. We didn't and, have it. We, it wasn't like we went through a list and said, we like this person or we like right, that person. Right. And, but, and I love that, that you posted or you did it through social media. So I saw it, you know, when you wrote the names. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I, just truthfully, I, you know, it's such a little thing, but, there are so many people who are struggling and we're really, you know, our, on its best day, unless you're David Hockney, I suppose, <laughs> on its best day, being an artist is a tough, it's a right. tough job and it's not a very particularly remunerative job. People don't make a lot of money being artists. And now with the art market essentially halted, you know, I started thinking as we talked, you know, what are some of these people going to do to keep body and soul together? I, you know, it bothers us. And you, you, you realize how little your effort is, but it's better than nothing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you have to start somewhere and every little teaspoon of effort helps somebody. Right. And, that was our thinking. And we've right. gotten some lovely messages. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice people. Yeah. Very nice. So, wonderful. Yeah, it, it was wonderful. So it was a nice opportunity. And yeah. And, and I think it's in moments like this, when this is happening, you know, I love to hear stories like that because uh, it inspires us all to do our, our part, right? We can all share what we have in different ways. There's also... Uh, this thing that's called the Artist Support Pledge that many mm -hmm. artists are being part of. And I, I interviewed the, the, uh, Matthew, who's the artist in the UK, who came up with the idea that's helping artists. So, you know, there's all, we can all find different ways, even artists supporting each other out emotionally yes. too, doing Zoom calls and things of that nature, um, doing, doing what we can to help each other out. And, uh, you know, thank you for what you have done. Um, Stephen, I would love if you can tell us, which uh, it coincides also with this, conversation, uh, the Venet Prize, which uh, is now open for submission. So I'm sure there are going to be a lot of friends who are listening to this video or watching this video, listening to the post and say, what in the world is the Venet Prize? Can you give us a bit of a story on what that is and how can our friends submit to it? Okay. The answer is the Venet Prize is a competition for women figurative realist painters. And 
The idea behind it is that we're going to pick 10 finalists from the submissions. They all get uh, to participate, they get a, a, a prize and the opportunity to put their work in a, in a group exhibition. And then we, from those 10, we pick one winner. That winner gets $50,000 paid over two years and a solo exhibition of their work at the end of the two years. Mm -hmm. And it was our way of trying to uh, promote and propel the careers of women figurative realist painters. <clears throat> so the call for entries opened on April 16th. Uh, go to the BennettPrize.org and that will give you the ground rules. Uh, the actual submissions will go through CAFE. Uh, mm -hmm. Many artists know call for entries. Right. CAFE will be the uh, software. The call for entries will close on October 16th. Judging will occur in the November, December time frame. We will announce the winners January-ish. Uh, we will ask them to submit their work for photography uh, in January, February, and then the show will open at the Muskegon, Michigan uh, Museum of Art in March. And we've cut the entry fee in half. Oh, wow, amazing. For, okay. the, for the second round, given right. the circumstances. Because given the circumstances, we cut yeah. the entry fee in half, and we hope that helps. And look, we've said if anybody can't pay the entry fee, reach out to uh th this is all on the website if you feel okay. like you can't pay the entry fee tell somebody because our uh, look the uh the goal here is to promote people and not build barriers so we'll right. but uh the 25 dollar entry fee rather than 50 bucks and uh, we would hope that anybody who thinks they're painting figurative realism uh and uh, a woman painter who hasn't sold a painting for $25,000 or more, you're eligible, bring it on. Give us your work, let us see what you're doing. Excellent, and fabulous. And this is the second edition, right? Because you uh, already went through the first round. I, I love when I saw the winner because I visited her when she was a, a graduate student oh, and I visited her studio when, you know, when she was working on the work. So it was very exciting to see, but all the finalists were amazing artists, some of them, which I know also personally. And, you know, to see the level and the caliber of, of yes. work that has gone through there. And it's, and I think it's also, of course, the price is amazing and it's wonderful, but it's also, you know, the, the chance to connect and be part of, you know, this amazing group of artists um, and, and kind of connect with each other. I think it's, it's, it's another benefit of that too. Well, one of the things we found was that a camaraderie kind of grew up. Those 10 finalist women, they, it was interesting to me, they were just kind of instant friends. They, yeah. There was a sisterhood that immediately developed. And I hope, I, I, I don't know this, but I sincerely hope they're supporting each other in the midst of all this right. because they all had, they all had amazing vision. Mm -hmm. What wonderful artistic vision those women had. And you say, these people haven't sold a painting for $25,000. They're laboring out there. <clears throat> Think of the great talent that hasn't been seen. That's in, yeah. Our goal is to get that talent in front of people who collect and in front of people who uh, determine what gets seen and right. let's get it out there. Good, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing that information. Our friends can find it right here under the screen. Make sure you check out the website as well. Follow them in social media. And I have one last question I want to ask you uh, because, you know, as you are collectors and you have many other friends who are collectors, uh, how are you during this time of pandemic? Because you cannot go to openings, you cannot go to galleries, museums, as you normally do, and you love to do that. Um, you know, what are you doing right now, you know, to find and to follow artists? Are you on Instagram, kind of uh, looking around? You know, what kind of things are you doing? And maybe a, a little tip that, artists can do right now, you know, to make sure that they are getting out there so that people like you can find them. Well, I, I'll make a couple of thoughts. It, Instagram is key. Instagram is kind of where the action is. Let people know you're alive. Let them know you're yeah. working. Give people a chance to, to know about you. 
Uh, Facebook, for frankly, Facebook isn't as popular with the younger uh, mm -hmm. generation, but the collectors watch Facebook and participate in it. So mm -hmm. don't discount Facebook. Okay. Uh, let people know where you are. I think the other thing we're doing is, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> we're watching the online auctions. There are some online auctions. We just, mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple of painters we like are participating in an online auction from an auction from a gallery mm. in Norway. Uh, and they're having, a, they're having an auction online. Uh, keep your presence up. Let people know you're alive. Don't, don't hide. Get out there in front of your audience because we want to know what you're doing. Right. Well, and I would say if you have a collector base, reach out to them. Show them what's on your easel. Um, That's keep, keep your work in front of them. And even though you, as a collector, you certainly can't buy everything that comes your way. It mm -hmm. does, you know, we have a few people that we say, oh, we're going, we're going to keep looking. This isn't yeah. it, but we're going to keep looking. And if they keep sending, then that mm -hmm. helps us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, which uh, that's kind of like, that's where my phrase comes. So be seen to be remembered, right? Yeah. Got to get seen. Otherwise, <laughs> you won't be remembered. And it's sometimes, true. yeah, sometimes, you know, you, uh, I know many artists sometimes get discouraged. Like, oh, I only have 500 followers. Yeah, but in those, you, don't know, you don't know who one of those 500 followers might be, which might make the whole difference in, in your career in the next, you know, few years. Well, what I say to people is, don't presume any enemies. Presume everybody's a friend. Yeah. Don't edit. Don't edit your audience. Assume that everybody who's following you is a potential collector and invite them in and show them your work. That's right. And just one more hint. Yeah. If somebody, and you would think this could go without saying, but we've recently experienced this. We were interested mm -hmm. in some pieces. <laughs> Asked the artist to send us a price list. Uh -huh. We never got it. Oh, no. And so we're not going to chase them. You know, exactly. I mean, it was a very clear statement yeah, on our part that we, we, reached reached out. we reached out. We were interested in never heard from them. And you say, that's, you know, like I know some people aren't good at that. Yeah. But but really well thank you so much dr elaine for your time steven thank you so thank much you, for Sergio. your time you having, good to see you you're having thank so you. you're having so wonderful it's always a pleasure to see you and i look forward to see you in the flesh <laughs> yes. in, the, in the future in a show somewhere around and uh, thank you for all the things that you do for artists on behalf of their community again i want to say thank you so much for all your efforts to Our continue pleasure. supporting artists and uh you know, to making a huge impact and difference in the lives of artists. Thank you, Sergio, and thanks for everything you do. Your breakfast with Sergio is great. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Next time we will have to have breakfast. <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll do it. Well, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining us here. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. That will make us super excited, super happy. Have a great day. Be safe. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level.